That is so much better. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name's Chris. I'm going to be your host for today, and today we have Wild Turkey Master Keeps Triumph. This is 2024 release. This is 104 proof. This is a sample because not all of us can afford $275 on bottles we don't know if we like or not, even me, this big YouTuber that I am. So this is a bottle split. We do it with some patrons. Check us out, patreon.com backslash bourbon of the week. Let's open this up. Let's try it up, and let's compare it today in our Bourbon Bomb of the Week to Russell's Reserve Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey Single Barrel. We're going to do that. I gotta remember not to drink this all so we can compare it during our bourbon bomb of the week. So here we go, Wild Turkey's Master Keep. Again, this is Triumph, the 2024 release. You know the rules, price, taste, drinkability. I didn't like the last Wild Turkey's Master's Keep. I think it was the Voyage. The one before that was the one that I still, unforgotten, one of my favorite bottles of all time. I still can't buy it because they're too expensive on the secondary market. But the one before that, I believe, was one. And I like that one as well, but unforgotten was definitely phenomenal. But this is completely different because this isn't a bourbon. This is a rye. So let's try this out. Everybody knows, time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Tastes like a rye. So let's go over the quick facts on this bottle right here. We know it's got a 10 year old age statement on it. We know it's the rye mash bill, which is 51% corn, 37% scratch that reverse it. 51% rye, 37% corn, which leaves us with 12% malted barley. That 10 year age statement definitely interests me when it comes to a rye. Again, I don't believe that these are age stated if I remember correctly. I know they also have like a six year rye, but that's not the single barrel edition. But let's try this 104 proof. Let's talk about drinkability on this. I got to save some for the bourbon bomb of the week, but this is just, I don't know what it is about this particular glass that's rubbing me the wrong way. Maybe it's because I'm already talking about the price in my head, which pisses me off, but let's try this one more time. Full disclosure, I don't want to love this bottle because it's $275 and I don't want to go out and find it because I fell in love with Unforgotten. I wasn't able to find another one. So it's just one of those things where I don't want to love it. But that being said, I'm not going to hold that against it, at least not at this point. I'll hold that against it when we talk about the price, but I will say... For 104 proof, it seems to drink a little bit hot for me. Maybe it's that high rye, but it's only 51% rye, so it's nothing crazy. It is my first glass of whiskey for the night. We can't say it's the neck pour unless I did get, in fact, the neck pour here, but it's been in a sample bottle for a little while. 104 proof. I love Wild Turkey. I love Russell's Reserve. I love all the single barrels that they put out, Camp Nelson, Tyrone, all of them. This right here, these master keeps, I just don't seem to like them. Like I said, Unforgotten is just something special. And one was decent, but the prices were a little, I don't know. It's just something about this that I don't love. What I will tell you that I love though, and I don't do this often, is the nose on this. The nose on this is phenomenal. It makes me want to enjoy the glass. I just feel like the nose doesn't translate into the taste, but we'll talk about that in a minute. 104 proof drinkability, last sip, I promise you. I mean, if I were to blind this, I'm not going to put it at 120 or anything like that, but I'd probably say like 107, maybe 110 even on a bad day, depending on what I ate. But I will say that's three to six proof points difference. We give it a 7.0 if it drinks right at its proof. So we got to go below that 7.0 mark when it comes to drinkability on this. Nothing crazy, but definitely like a 6.72 when it comes to drinkability on this. It deserves to be up near that seven, but 6.72 is the best I can do. Again, the nose is just phenomenal. And this is the tough part of the show because this is where we get into taste on this and this is where my personal preference might not align with your personal preference on this and I can see people loving this glass of whiskey. This seems more of the rye drinker's rye, right? I'm more of the guy, the bourbon drinker's rye, right? They want something a little bit more sweet, still have that rye spice on it, still love that mint, maybe a little bit of dill if I'm feeling frisky that day. If it was winter time, I might like this even better, but right now, I mean, we're in the middle of summer, 100 degrees out every day, and this is coming in at a hot 104 proof and then the taste on this you get that rye you get that allspice you get that clove the nose by the way is completely opposite i feel like i get more fruit more honey more sweetness on the nose but then when i take that first sip it's definitely all spice for me baking spices and then the hard part for me is this goes into like a very oaky finish for me not a sweet oak you definitely get that barrel char that 10 years really stands out on this which is crazy because a lot of their other stuff is 10 years and i don't really get that maybe they're using a different char level or something on this but 
for me, this seems like a rye drinker's rye. So if you're a rye drinker, like if you truly love rye, I think you'll love this a lot more than me. I'm a bourbon drinker's rye who wants something a little bit more towards the bourbon side of the world than the rye side of the world, which I was hoping I would get being only that it's 51% rye, but I never really loved what Wild Turkey does with their rye. It still seems like they're trying to figure it out themselves. But for me right here, taste-wise, a little bit too much spice for me, not enough sweetness, and way too oaky on the end. And it's not like it's even over-oaked at 10 years. It just seems like that stands out for me. The finish isn't that long. The nose is the best part of this glass for me. And this is the reason why I say it's tough, right? It's not a bad whiskey. It's just not the whiskey that I'm specifically looking for. It's not for my particular palate. I just went on a trip with like 12 other people and we tried to do barrel picks and everybody's got a palate, right? This guy likes this, this woman likes that, and I like something in between. So we're all trying to gear together to figure out what's the best of the best for all of us. And then we're also trying to do picks for other people. So we got to gear towards their palates as well. So it becomes very difficult in the whiskey world to appeal to everybody. And I'm not going to knock them for that. I think it's a very good glass of whiskey, just not what I like. So when it comes to taste, I mean, I still got to go below a seven, right? I might drop this into the fives personally. Again, it might just be the rye. It might just be the oak. It might just be the fact that I don't love wild turkey rye, which as you can see, I've had this for a very long time. I don't really go to it too often just because it's not for me. Wild turkey 101 rye, I love that just because I can put it in an old fashioned or a Manhattan or something like that. Very versatile bottle, but different when you're talking $40 versus what we're about to talk for the price on this. So when it comes to taste on this, I gotta give that, I'm gonna go on the fives. I might even go fours for this personally. I'm gonna go like 4.97. I feel like we gotta get close to those fives, but 4.97 is really where I'm gonna put this when it comes to taste. And if you thought I was treating this a little bit poorly before, we're gonna talk about price on this bottle right here. And this price comes in at a whopping still 275, so they didn't raise it quite yet. But after the whole Russell's Reserve 15 year, I bet you they raised the prices on all of these things going forward. I don't know what Triumph did. I don't know what it's doing on the secondary market right now. I don't know what it did for sales. Did it sell out? Did they have a little bit of trouble moving some product? It's always interesting to see when you raise prices where people will kind of draw that line. And then obviously people are going to go out and they're going to look at the reviews. I know when it comes to barrel picks, it's hard to sell rye these days. So a $275 rye is going to be even harder to do. For me, we give it a 7.0 if it's an average tasting whiskey at an average drinkability and an average price of $70 to $90. So you know where this is going. This is going very, very low on the totem pole when it comes to price. I'm happy that I have an opportunity to drink this and I have a Patreon group and a community that allows me to get these samples so I don't have to go out and spend $275 to crack a bottle that I'm going to drink once. Not everybody has that opportunity. Go out, create some communities, meet some people in the community, maybe check your local bars to see if they have an opportunity to pick up these bottles so you can try before you buy. This one for me is an immediate try before you buy. Let's give it a score when it comes to price. I mean, can it really get much worse? I'm trying to think of like your standard bottle of whiskey that's more than $275. Not secondary pricing, just straight up regular pricing, MSRP on bottles, because even the BTAC lineups run like 140 to 150. Uh, I mean, Double Eagle Rare maybe is up there. I don't even know what that's going for these days. 275 is some of the highest priced whiskey that I know of personally on the market that you have access to, right? That isn't the BTAC and stuff like that. Do I go threes? Do I go the lowest score I've ever given? Just because, again, I don't like it. The drinkability wasn't fantastic. And the price is, I mean, 90 times 90, 180. We're almost three times what we're talking about when it comes to price on this. I don't know. I'm going to go threes. 3.21 when it comes to price on this. It's got to be down there. I've never given a score that low, so I don't even know how low we should go. The good thing about this particular bottle is during our bourbon bottle of the week, we didn't have to drink that much to figure out that we didn't like it. So let's pour this up next to this Russell's Reserve straight rye whiskey single barrel. This comes in at 104 proof as well. So I'm very, very curious about drinkability on this compared to drinkability on this, but there's only one way to find out. Let's pour them up. There's no reason to do this blind either just because I don't really care to do this blind. So we're going to pour these up next to each other. We're going to know which one's which and we're just going to try them out real quick. Drinkability is something that I'm very interested in as well as that rye, right? I feel like this is more oaky. I wish these did have an age statement, but I'm assuming, right? Maybe maybe these are closer to six years, like the six-year rye, but only one way to find out which one we like better. Everybody knows. Traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. That is so much better. 
For me, taste-wise, that is so much better. I will say drinkability-wise, they're actually pretty even. This drinks more like 107 to 110 proof as well. I almost want to pour up 110 proof like a Russell's, but it won't be a rise, so it won't really compare. But drinkability-wise, they're pretty similar. A lot more fruit for it, a lot more like zesty fruit, like orange, maybe a little bit of a cherry note on this, but you still get a little bit of that spice on here. This one over here, and then the oak, right? We're probably talking six years versus 10 years. I don't know. This feels like it's almost like double, feels like a double oak dry is what it feels like to me. I've had some very good double oak dries, but it just seems like this is like, it's all rye and all oak. It just seems very one, I don't want to say one dimension, two dimensional, I suppose. Oh, I mean, it's not even close. This is dry and it's, it's, compared to this it's almost tannins on this this one is super sweet super fruit forward i like this one a lot still a little bit of spice on there so it's giving you that rye spice again i'm assuming this is the same mash bill right i'm assuming that wild turkey hasn't come up with a new mash bill just for this particular rye release they can't they couldn't have done that and had a 10 year old right I mean, this matchup goes straight from bright versus dark, all the way from the color on this. And this does look like it's a little bit younger. It does bring out a little bit more youthfulness, so I can appreciate at least a little bit more age behind this. But it does seem like, for me, this is the darker side of rye. This is your wintertime camping side of rye, where this is something that I could see myself drinking on like a cool fall day or even in the middle of summer as long as I get a cooler day. Not a bad rye. Still not my favorite. Wild turkey ryes just aren't my favorite. I think there's a lot better ryes when it comes to the rye community. This this right here, though, is just not going to be a pickup at $275. I said that enough. I'm not going to say it again. We're going to end our bourbon bomb of the week right there. Let's finish this one up because we never leave whiskey in our glass. Cheers, y'all. I mean, today's video is going to be short and sweet. 4.96. This doesn't even crack the fives for us. It might be one of the lowest scores we've ever given. I'm sure there's a few lower than that. But that being said, the only way that I can see people buying this bottle, one, they tried it and they loved it. And if that's the case... Great. I can completely understand if you like this particular bottle of whiskey. It's just not for me at that price point. Two, you have indisposable income and you just want to buy things. Three, you're a wild turkey fanatic. You have everything else in the wild turkey master keeps lineup and you want to keep the tradition going. Other than that, I don't really see why you're buying this bottle of whiskey. Again, I would definitely try it before I buy it, especially at that price point. I always recommend that. Find people that have these bottles, go over to their house, try it, ask them to try a sample, find a bar that might have it. But otherwise, I mean, I didn't even finish the glass and that's not like me. In an entire video, I'm, I, it's normally two or three glasses. Granted, I don't have that tonight, but still, it tells you something right there. But hey, that's it for today. Make sure you click that like and subscribe button here on YouTube. I would greatly appreciate it. We're trying to get to 10,000 sooner rather than later. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. We just cracked 17,000, which is absolutely wild. Patreon, Discord, both those links in the description below. That's how we get our hands on samples like this. We have a great community. Come check it out. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly. Stay healthy. Stay happy. I want to say keep buying Master's Keeps, but if these are 300 plus next year, I just don't know what to tell you. Cheers, y'all. Oof.